right, my dashing little citizens of Sikistan. This is the first training vlog in a while, and it's the first training vlog with Anton as my coach, as far as I remember. So let's get into it and see what we were doing today. You'll have to forgive me for the overdramatic thumbnail, but uh, I did want to catch people's eyes, of course. You've got to stand out. So we started off with 4x5 on the close grip overhead squat. I started off with my pinky finger on the rings and then progressively got closer. Honestly, this isn't that close, but uh, I'll be honest, a lot of jiu-jitsu and not a whole lot of weightlifting has tightened up my shoulders a little bit, makes you a little bit more internally rotated. Not a whole amount of external rotation needed in jiu-jitsu unless you're getting key-locked or americana So these felt quite good. Left shoulder felt fine, right was a little bit tight. But I think that is from continually carrying my, my son on my right hand shoulder. <laughs> so I could, uh, I think my trap is getting a little bit wound up. So I need to do something about that. So warmed up with these and felt fine. Uh, just 50 kilos, four sets of five. I didn't actually ask Anton why, uh, why he gave me these. Uh, he didn't give any reason. I don't really ask him that much, to be honest. I just do what I'm told. That's uh, kind of what I prefer, to be honest. I don't... Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't really buy into the notion that you need to know what's going on. You don't have to tell your athletes, and that's kind of the way I get coached as well. I, I, if I need to know something, I assume the coach will tell me, and if not, I will just do the sessions. You know, I know sometimes people talk about, oh, your coach will explain everything to you, but just to be frank, as we always are, the best athletes I see, especially in things like weightlifting and other kind of sports, is they just do the stuff. And they, not that they don't care, and it's not that they're not intelligent athletes, and it's not that they don't think about it. It's that they just don't really want to know or have a reason for anything. They just buy into that mindset that they this is what they need to do. Sometimes, and this may or not be true, this might not be in a correct assessment of the situation, but sometimes if you, for example, this might be coming from a place where if you ask why you're doing something, you may doubt the reason and the really big important part of any kind of program or a vital part is that you buy into it and you buy into what you're doing so then we moved on to some snatches so literally four by two at 105 this session was actually supposed to be done on saturday but i a couple of reasons a couple of unexpected things came up so i was literally just doing uh, this on tuesday the, the time i got to this or monday even tuesday what day is today what day is today Wednesday. I did this on Tuesday, my God. So a couple of things came up. So again, weightlifting, it's not that it's not a priority at the moment, but it's level with other things. This is the first time I've been doing weightlifting and I've had to consider how will weightlifting impact something else I'm doing rather than the other way around. So I was thinking about how will this impact a jiu-jitsu session tomorrow. So these felt slightly loose overhead and I'm jumping back, which is something that's kind of annoying me. Uh, I'm putting my shoulders back too early and my knees are slightly in the way, but uh, we will await the... Uh, the recommendations from Anton and see what he says there. Then we moved on to, if you remember from when the video I talked about Anton being my coach, uh, he said my back is too weak. So then we proceeded to 150 kilo snatch pulls, four by four. And I honestly think this is the first time in my weightlifting career where I've had to think about doing sets of pulls and not be intimidated by them. Intimidated is the only word I can think of where th these were like a heavy set of five by five for me these were i know it's four by four but you get what i mean in this back squat these are things that i actually had to not talk myself into doing but i had to engage with them and i had to concentrate on doing them so it's not something i've ever really done for snatch pulls or clean deadlifts or not in my living memory of my weightlifting program so these were done with a big emphasis on buttocks or ass extension so a lot of ass and i was trying to focus on that my snatches as well and then a lot of traps so anton was really really on to me about getting my traps elevated or shrugging upwards when i'm doing my snatches and snatch pulls but specifically to emphasize that no arm bend whatsoever which i'm doing after the extension like an asshole and he told me not to do that he said only traps but i'm only seeing that now as i'm watching it so we're all learning together so these are 150 four by four then we moved on to back squats, so 165 by 5. So my squat is quite strong at the moment. Uh, so you saw the way I was doing that peaking for the last kind of couple of weeks was a lot of singles and then sort of waves. So I was trying that out and it was working quite well. So I ended up at 260, then I had to cut some weight, but the squat still stayed quite strong. So 240 or 250 
if I needed to too. So this is the first time I've done volume in weeks. And I'll be honest with you, I had a little bit of jelly legs by the end of this. Uh, so I was really focusing on keeping a straight wrist in the rack position. Uh, see as it gets better as sets go on. So I don't like a lot of wrist flexion. One thing I could do as well is just move that barbell slightly further down my back. You'll see it's slightly too high. It looks a little bit too high to me. So a little bit lower, kind of the way we talk about that kind of Seeker Squat we teach. And you'll see that in the uh, Seeker Strength Guide to Back Squat book when that is released. But you'll see in this set much better straighter wrist angle here. And you get a much more consistent back angle and you get a lot more drive into the barbell. You also get this better feeling of tightness across your back when squatting. I hope you like the edgy angles. My shed is progressing well. So obviously, a, la, a newborn, I didn't get a whole lot of time, but recently I was able to get the electricity sorted. So now I have plugs and I have lights and I have a little Dimplex heater. But uh, as you saw from previous, you can see from the walls, I did a lot of hard face ply and insulation. So the shed is quite well insulated and with a little panel heater, it should be chef's kiss. Mwah. So then we finish second last set of the back squats, just trying to keep that angle. I have a habit sometimes in very heavy squats of letting go of the barbell. Uh, someone actually someone asks why does it lose that and that is just a bad habit if you look my really heavy squats like 270 plus I will do it sometimes so I was really trying to focus on keeping the wrist straight especially at the bottom when I lose the most it's funny how you can think of something begin the squat half a second later you've completely forgotten something so I hope you enjoyed the vlogs I'll be bringing at least one vlog a week of the weightlifting and uh, we'll see how it goes and I'm very interested to see what it looks like in the next couple of weeks and months thanks for watching guys if you have any questions don't ask me, ask Anton, because I'm not the coach here. I'm joking. Ask any questions you have, and I'll try and answer them. Thanks, guys.